Welcome to Real Herbalism Radio, show 248, recorded at Big Dog Studios in Eugene, Oregon. Today's show is made possible by... One of the benefits of the Herbal Nerd Society is getting custom content written for you every month. Another thing that you get as an Herbal Nerd Society member is the ability to say what you want to hear in our herbal conferences and those herbal articles. You also get an ad-free viewing environment for the Practical Herbalist. Join today at TheHerbalNerdSociety.com. Launching your first herbal adventure is thrilling and frightening at the same time. Add to that the need to make money doing it, and you've got an herbal business, which can be quite a challenge. Having support as you go is key to success in all aspects of herbalism. Today we're talking with Yolanda Joy, herbalist and founder of Herbal Entrepreneur, about getting started with and running your own business. Now, here are your hosts. I'm Candace Hunter. And I'm Patrick Hunter. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Real Herbalism, Herbalism Radio. Radio. Oh, Yolanda, I'm so glad to have you back. Thank you. I'm really glad to be back on. It was a lot of fun last time, and I'm sure today is going to be just as fun. Indeed, indeed. And last time you had a very successful conference. I'm excited to hear about you're going to have another conference next year, right? I think that is the plan. Yay. But we'll see. I'm yeah, getting ready to start organizing it for a game. But yeah, it's um, <laughs> hopefully it'll go well. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. Because, you know, you're making a huge success of the herbal business you've begun. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, yeah. It's also like that thing of, um, yeah. We've built this community now. We have, um, yeah. uh, yeah, a community of able business owners, and we help each other in like it's sharing yes. those stories and like continuing that process. It's not something I want to do once and done. It's something that like people yeah. are still doing cool things. Let's um, keep on sharing them. So that's uh, what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. It's. I mean, it's. It's always about learning and growing, right? I mean, your first conference was smaller, and then your mm -hmm. second conference was bigger, and you actually had, like, tracks. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, wow, this is starting to look like one of those, like, AHG conferences, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> getting there, getting there. <laughs> the, yeah, as an online conference, it's not too bad. Like, it's, um, yeah, the I guess because that's the difference. It's not an in-person conference because you can't really um, yeah. replace that um, – those real life connections with people and like really meeting them and shaking their hand. But yeah. like, as far as hearing stories and um, being inspired by people that you wouldn't have the opportunity to otherwise meet, it's an incredible experience. The Able Entrepreneur Conference. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. And I love what you're doing with the herb circle too, because I mean, honestly, running a business, run, doing herbalism for many of us is a very solo endeavor. I mean, you're kind of, a lot of people are doing it, but they're the only ones in their community or, there may be a few other herbalists, but they're very different and you don't always connect, you know, with everybody. So it's very solo. Running a business mm -hmm. is also, you know, that that can be a challenge. So bringing that together with the Herb Circle, I mean, that's, I think that's wonderful. Yeah, well, that was yeah, the main reason I started it really, <laughs> because mm -hmm. it's been going for more than a year now. I started it like after the first conference. And, um, yeah, the, the main, the main reason I started it was because of, I wanted to have that, that contact with other herbalists because of like, I wanted to start my business. And that's like why I really do feel like I'm part of the circle. I'm not the leader yes. of it. I'm just, um, in it. Yeah. And that's, um, the, the beautiful thing because we, we get on these calls each month and we share what we're doing, what we're working on. And then like, we all participate in the discussion and offer ideas and um help each other and that's just like a um an incredible opportunity really to be able to do that because of often we get stuck when we're in our own like you, oh, yeah. you can be going along for a while fine but then you get to a point where you're like oh what do I do you're like well maybe you're yeah. trying something and it's not quite working like right. um just at the moment we've got like a clinical herbalist who she's had a practice for a while but she added in a different type of service and um this new service isn't taking off as the first one did. And she was like, kind of, what's going on? Like, the, um, why is it that this isn't happening? And we were kind of got into the nuts and bolts of it in the, in the discussion. And we're talking nice. about like, um, basically, I mean, we're still kind of in the middle of this process. So right. I don't know if it's going to, like, if that's how it will be, <laughs> like what the outcome is going to be, but we, we were discussing about it and her kind of clarity of who that 
the the service was for and what it was going to do for someone it was a lot more clear for that first service that she had and then yeah. um the the new service that she was adding she was a lot more vague on it and we were kind of getting um more ideas from each other and we're all participating in the discussion and that's just like part of the um the thing like she was stuck on it but then another mind coming together and like thinking about it really helped to work through that and then yeah we'll, we'll see the results as they kind as of they unfold pan out in the future yeah, yeah definitely yeah well, i had there was a very long time almost a decade ago I ran a similar group that was in person, though, um, for mm -hmm. and it was, just, it was our particular group was very tiny. There was like five or six of us at any given time. And I I did it. I co-ran it with another bookkeeper friend of mine. And we would have mm -hmm. people come in and we would listen to some type of business program. My bookkeeper friend had like a whole ton of them. So we would listen to whatever book, bookkeeping or financial or whatever it was. And then we would take time to talk about what we were doing to work on our businesses. And what we were doing was much smaller and much more it tended to focus toward the bookkeepers, you know, bookkeeping, accounting, that sort of thing, because that happened to be that group of people. But what you're doing, I think, sounds like it's broader. So it's probably going to better serve the wider group and better serve any given individual because they can ask about or they can talk about the many facets of their business, not just that one bookkeeping section. <laughs> yeah, like that's definitely true. Like the, um, my, um, I, I try to get to know every member as personally as possible. So like um, when someone first joins, like I, I literally call them on the phone. It's funny because I, I have to call from Skype. And so it always comes up as a private number. And they're always like, who is this person? Like, and, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and they're like, almost every time when they respond, they're like, I didn't know whether to respond because it was a private number. Like, it's you. I'm so glad. <laughs> but most people do respond. But the, the, the aim of that call at the beginning is it's not just like a survey or something like that. It's like I get to know the person and what, they kind of want to get out of the herbal circle. And then um, that's like really, really useful for me because I get to know like about their business and um, what can help them. And it gives me ideas because of like, there are usually specific reasons that someone joins, like they want um, help from this or this, or maybe they just um, want to connect with a different, like a specific type of person. Like they might want to connect with another clinical herbalist or they, right. um, like someone else who has experience in a certain field. And then I can straight away say like, oh, this member is really good at that or whatever. And then um, if we don't have content uh, uh, or something on that already, I can try and find someone who does know about it and um, to share as like a kind of a webinar or training kind of thing for the, the members and share that with everyone. Because often if someone has that issue, right. someone else does as well. And so that's... Um, uh, like it's a beautiful part of it really is just like really getting to know the members and um, kind of tailoring the program around what they want to what they want to learn <laughs> right. that, and so it's, it's really um, evolved over time as well because of uh, yeah there's been so many ideas that I've got from different people yeah. and now there's like a, a big bank of content <laughs> inside that you can kind of dive through because of there's um, yeah been lots of conversations over over this past year and it's continuing to to grow like that nice yeah and it keeps the discussion keeps evolving i mean not only is it evolving because new people are coming in or people who are there have i worked on that part now i've got this new part that i want to work on so they can keep growing mm -hmm. and changing but also i mean business and marketing all of that stuff is growing and changing on its own all the time so you're constantly bringing the influx of new ideas or new perspectives in yeah that's definitely true like um on both parts of what you said like i i know that I, most herbalists that i know haven't done one thing only one thing the whole time right they like kind of try try one <laughs> thing and then try another and so it's um definitely that um that pathway of trying things and um yeah and that's why it's so useful having that community of people that you can talk yeah. to and like say like when you did that how did you do this part or whatever like it's definitely a um a really useful part but then also just like the yeah the landscape of where we are now yeah. in this world is crazy like it's oh, yeah. just yeah 
<laughs> yeah. like it's just it's changing so fast like the um like if you think even 20 years ago like online marketing wasn't even that maybe 30 years ago now but um 30 yeah. years ago like it wasn't important it wasn't. Um, online marketing at all I would say from the yeah yeah 1990s onwards it started to like slowly started to pick important. up steam and then yeah. you know by the 2010 years, it's been yeah. like king king exactly. <laughs> You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, like the even like just being like, you know, recognized by a search engine so that if someone right. types in herbalist in your area and your business comes up on the map, yeah. like that is kind of essential for yeah. a business now. Like yeah. if you don't turn up on the map, people aren't going to like, they're not going to find you unless they're specifically searching or come across you some other way but like most yeah. people just like I, I know I search on, on like the actual map or just on Google and then it comes up but like the those basic things just kind of need to be in in place now right but then that's like what's essential now but like in five years time it's there'll be other things that we, we need to stay on top of five years and so it's five um, months the way it's changing <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy the like and like there's just so like that can also be overwhelming as well because oh, there are yeah. so many different strategies that you can do like you know there's someone saying like be on instagram be on facebook be on pinterest be on like um or like do in-person outreach or like there's just all these different oh, kind gosh. of things that are coming at you and you're like what do I do yeah. and making that decision of like where to spend your time and like what is actually going to benefit your business the most is a um it's a it's a difficult decision to to get right and yeah. the the hardest part is maybe you have to try something you can't kind of stand uh. still <laughs> and so right. it's like the that you have to be okay with experimenting and failing I think yeah. as a business owner like it's um it's a little bit scary and um and just trying it but you have to in this world of change because you don't know what's going to work there's nothing that's like right. completely proven oh, and it's heck. changing so quickly so yeah just because something worked for you last year doesn't mean it will work again or it will work next year or maybe it'll work next year but the year after it might not you don't know because things are changing Mm -hmm. and yeah we, we need you know, to be adaptable yeah and in many ways it's like working with plants and plant medicines what no matter what facet you're doing in herbalism there are some things that you know you need to do you know have, you have to put the seed into the ground it won't grow if you don't put it in the ground but will the lighting be right how what should the fertilizing or you know what should the the soil be like all those questions they change just like mother earth is constantly changing so you have to experiment you know, one year the calendula was great over here, but the next year not so much. We had to move it to there. You know, you're constantly explaining. It's the same thing in business. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, and that's, I think, of like that experience and intuition as well. Because yeah. it's like as a gardener, you kind of the first year, it's very much just like trying and hoping for the best. But after several years, like, yeah. and like yeah, there is that change and that like you have to, um, uh, adapt to the circumstances of course yeah. but you start to develop that sense of um at least that baseline sense yes. of what we work or what um what won't work to to kind of um, work from there and yeah. it's um yeah like I kind of almost approach it as like a bit of a game it's um like the the business side of things is actually fun for me I um like Thanks yeah in, enjoy that side of things in terms of what works and what doesn't because it's kind of yeah it's like a a fun kind of experiment to see um what works there is obviously like um risks behind it and so it can be a bit of a scary game i guess yeah but like <laughs> if, if you are like in like i i'm the the sole breadwinner of our family i guess that um, we have a very um uh low expenses lifestyle right. so it's not that risky that helps, but it but... <laughs> is um yeah it helps but there is like like kind of um it's a bit of a risky game but it's mainly yeah. um mainly fun I think for me I, I definitely like having that freedom of being able to work for myself and choose how I spend my time and what I do but that's um definitely a huge part of it is deciding like kind of what to spend your time on right. so that it so that you win the game yeah <laughs> or at least do well <laughs> right <laughs> yeah, you at least want to break even, but it would be much better to win. Uh, losing sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Although, 
you know. Although sometimes... I think most people in the beginning of an herbal business game yeah. or any business game are on the like <laughs> that, like yeah. you're you're lucky to break even. Yeah. I know for myself, I was, yeah, freelancing as in like getting paid for freelance work <laughs> while doing my own business stuff on the side yeah. for like five years oh, before yeah. I was able to kind of just do my own thing but that like that was actually good for me because I learned so many skills working for someone else at the same time right but like it's um yeah that part of that transition into um yeah being able to fully do your own herbal business is exciting yeah it is it's a challenge I mean any business but um like you're going back to the idea of trying what works what doesn't and you know doing this for so many years you you think you've got the 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 golden ticket and then everything you you think you know gets gets destroyed because something else changes and for me sometimes that's just frustration you build up this big tower and and then there's one thing that can collapse it because you weren't moving on it fast enough and to be able to be dynamic and change is is the key to all of this and some people get stuck in their ways and that 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 rut that we get stuck in that's ne- never going to keep your business moving, especially uh, an herbal business where you have, to be fair, a lot of competition, not just from your local market, but from in the global market. There's so much information that we can get a hold of, and it's hard mm-hmm. Yeah, so, to stay Definitely. in that competitive mode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like also because of um, herbalists are kind of up against yeah, like that competition, like it up against really big players, I oh, guess. Yeah. If you think about an herbal product maker, oh, yeah. they are um, <laughs> like trying to compete with those big herbal companies is yeah. like impossible. Right. <laughs> so, right. Like it's um, it like the only way to stand out is to stand out. So like to specifically market yourself as not that big company, but like that um, the the smaller company who values quality and um like you know that slower process and marketing is open that way because of like really competing with those huge companies who are already established it's it's a difficult path to follow yeah. but the interesting part of that is that um even though we have this high competitive and like but we are like on the same ground as as them mm-hmm. as those big companies when it comes to the um legal side of things so like yeah. the cgmps and things like that the those processes that we need to like as in for businesses that are based in the us they need to um apply, uh, be under the fda regulations for example right. and have those processes correct um according to yeah what is stipulated in the guidelines right. and those things that like a lot of them are difficult to to do from a small business perspective. So like things like batch testing, if you do small batches of like 50 (laughs) products, like, and you have to test one of those products, or even you have to keep one of those products in a cupboard in case there's a recall, like it's a, um, uh, like it's one fiftieth of your, of your batch. Whereas in comparison to a company who makes 5,000 at a time, it's like just total, um, yeah imbalance there so like we're kind of following the same rules but are at that like um disadvantage but it's um i think it's like there's a couple of things from this is like first of all like the rules are difficult but they are there for a reason so like the sooner you accept that as a business owner the better it will be for you (laughs) it's like um, (laughs) like the so it's like um i remember when i was younger and learning maths and i was a little bit um like kind of frustrated at things that didn't quite work out or um like uh and wanted to change the rules but you can't change the rules in math like you <laughs> need to, like that's how it is you have to work with what they are and um then go with it and that's how it is with the the regulations you have to yeah. um get the rules and just kind of go with it because you we live in the in the in this area and that's mm-hmm. the rules and you have to follow those rules. But um, the, so that's the first thing is that like, <laughs> get it yeah. into your head that the rules need to be followed. And yeah, then, which um, is honestly, I think most of the herbalists I know tend to be a little bit like cats, you know, mm-hmm. they all want to kind of make up their own rules and do it their own way. And in 
practice, maybe that works great in many ways, but when it comes to legalities and running a business, not so much so. You, you, you do yeah. really need to follow the rules. Yeah, definitely. It's um, like just from a yeah from a business point of view, because of like it, you're protecting your business, your asset, yeah. which is um, yeah, really important if you want to grow it and you want to um, uh, make have a sustainable business. It it needs to follow the rules, or like there is that always that risk looming over you that there could be um, right. yeah that you could be asked to stop in the future, yeah. which would just be a mess for your income and everything. Yeah. So like just doing your best to follow those rules is really important. Oh man, that's such a pickup. You got to try this tiger tea from Sacred Blossom Farms. In fact, if you go to sacredblossomfarms.com right now and enter in real herb, all caps, 15, you can save 15% on your next order. Tell them that Practical Herbal sent you. But the, yeah, the second part is that, um, like, it's not that hard. Like, it seems really hard. Like, there's so much kind of information coming at you and it's um, like, where do I even start? Like, especially when oh, yeah. you start looking well, on the FDA website. Yeah, I was like, going to say, if you start, you read the regulation and they'll use, like, a hundred words to say what could have been said in ten. <laughs> you know, they don't mm -hmm. simplify it. They make it really, the language is so complex and somewhat yeah. academic and legal and you know mm -hmm. and also very repetitive yeah the like if there's slightly different things they like kind of from a legal perspective they have to write it out in full for each kind of right thing and so then it um uh does yeah <laughs> take a lot of words <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah like I, and then the point is though is that like there's all these it seems more difficult than it yeah. needs to be. And like, yeah. it's really just kind of like a, um, a list of guidelines. Like it's like a list of what you need to work through to, um, and it's, it's all about showing that your processes lead to products that are safe for your consumers yeah. to take. And so that's like ultimately a good goal. Right. We just, um, need to be able to have those in place. And like, it is a, it is a big ask though. Like mm -hmm. I, um, I know for myself in like, I've um, started making products in my business and like it's yeah the batch size. This is the huge mm -hmm. thing. Like if you have to um, do a batch production record for every batch that you make, it's um, it starts to be a lot. If you make these small, like I, up until recently, I was making like really small batches, like, you like know, ten. five or 10. Ten. Yeah, I've <laughs> like, done that. It was like, <laughs> and it, it was ridiculous for batch yeah. production records, like really ridiculous. Yeah. That you, you like once, like that's fine for like folk, very community, like if yeah. it's not a business, that's fine. Yeah. But once you've decided that you want to actually do it as a business, then like you have to step, step up and do it slightly differently. And right. so that's where it's like, um, yeah, being able to do those bigger batches and then you follow the, like, because once you've got that process, you just yeah. follow the process. And then, so that's like the master um, manufacturing record. Yeah. And then the batch production record is just like that kind of alternate version for that exact batch. So maybe you did something slightly different in the batch or you, right. you know, you, you you weigh out the materials and it was like one gram less or one gram more. You write out exactly what it was right. in that exact batch so that... um it makes a lot more sense and it's yeah. um uh yeah but like the batch size is really, it's really <laughs> important like that mm. but yeah like they, that's just uh an example yeah. i guess yeah and it's that is. i mean whether you're whether you're making products or you're practicing clinically you know there's processes they aren't necessarily outlined in the same way like the products making you've got the gmps the good manufacturing processes um, whether you're the United States or wherever, you know, whatever your community is, there's going to be an authority that has stipulated what GMP processes should look like. Following them makes sense. If you're a clinician, you don't have that clearly outlined, but your teachers should have taught you a reasonable place to start. And you're going to want to, you've got records that you're keeping. The records need to be in under lock and key you know, protecting mm -hmm. your patients or your clients' safety and all, you know, I mean, the, the ideas are all there and they're all very important legally because if someone, you know, if something happens and, and you have to, you know, answer to lawyers, 
you have processes that you need to follow or that you've, if you've been following them, that's more protection for you. Choosing to not yeah. follow them and do things on the fly like, like, you know, was okay 100 years ago isn't as okay anymore. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's not no, as safe. Feel like it's, yeah. It's, it's different now. Like, it's um, the – everything is a lot more controlled. And, again, that's, like, a good thing for people. But in general, <laughs> in some ways, as a, as a general rule, it's a good thing. But um, the – yeah, as a business owners, we definitely have to – um. Yeah. Yeah, step up and adapt to that um, that change because we, yeah, have but to, the other, to compete. The, the other thing that all of those processes do for you as a business owner is they give you essentially like your own control. You know, I made this batch or I saw these clients and they had this pattern and this is the stuff I chose. Did it work? Didn't it work? How successfully did it work? Now I've got a new mm-hmm. client that's got similar patterns or I'm making a new product that needs to, I want it to do very much like the old product was, but the old product isn't working as well. Why isn't it working as well? You know, you can, you can go back and look at what you did and analyze it and see what to do differently and then record that. And it's very sciencey, to be honest. I mean, and that yeah. makes sense, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like that logbook where you record your observations and mm-hmm. over time you start to build up your um, repertoire of um, what works and what doesn't or yeah. like possibilities that you could apply in the future, I guess. Because again, it's not just um, one one out, like one person equals one outcome, but that you've kind of got like a couple of options that have yes. worked in the past that you can like apply in this case and then see how it goes from there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's exactly how really famous, really good herbalists like Rosemary Gladstar or Maria Noel Groves or Paul Bergner. That's how people like that have formulas they can share because they, they used the formula originally. They wrote notes, they kept work, kept working with it. They tweaked it. And eventually they found something that worked pretty well for an awful lot of people and these and they have indications of when it works well so now the rest of us can apply those formulas so it makes sense yeah yeah it's like that empirical evidence that there is um that it's over like with uh more and more people it's working it's working it's working and then you can share it as something that has worked in these cases and it's um yeah a lot more um founded in that way as well yeah and i mean honestly many aspects of business work that way you know you try this marketing campaign and it did or didn't work or it worked so 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 you find things you could change in it if you've documented for yourself in your marketing plans what you did and made notes of how you did it differently from what you had planned to do and why, then later you can use that knowledge to do the next one better and you keep improving. Yeah. Yeah. That's like a really important process as well. Like, um, I think that's part of like, um, I like to separate my year into like, um, kind of chunks according to what I'm Mm -hmm. doing but it is really useful in terms of like setting goals and then like taking action and then reflecting on it and um that reflection period is really really important like it's kind of more fun to do the goals yeah because of that like the um that visioning part looking ahead and um what's possible then the action you kind of like you're either just like going 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 and don't have time to look up or (laughs) you just yeah that's usually what you're like (laughs) but then like for me at least I often get to the end of the action period and then I'm just too exhausted to reflect and like I don't actually spend that time to reflect and that's like a, a um a big error because of you miss so many insights in terms of um what worked and what didn't in that action phase which you can apply back and um and use when you're doing your next for you in the next one exactly it's like that that cycle of things that that go around but like that um for me at least the reflection part of that circle is the part that i'm um most likely to skip but it's also one of the most valuable I mean the action phase is the most valuable in terms of like um if you I mean they're all valuable because if you have to do the visioning right for the action to be useful but um 
<laughs> you have to act for something to happen. So. Right. Well, I think it's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's really like our modern culture is a lot that way. The idea that you should be go, go, go all winter long. You know, we never rest. We never take the actual winter break that Mother Nature kind of dictates we should. And we do that mm -hmm. in business. So it's very easy to skip over the reflection period, skip over the looking yeah. back and just, you know, just constantly be looking just forward. Go. And yeah. Yeah, well, I actually, um, yeah, this is something that I think is a problem <laughs> with our culture of go, go, go. <laughs> yeah. but, um, and that's something that like recently, since I've been like kind of doing my own business and not working with other people, it's um, something I've been a lot more intentional about is like taking yeah. periods of like proper break and reflection. Yeah. And it's um, especially for someone who like, who like does involve computer time, um, as part of their work, I just think it's so important to get away and um, yeah. to ground yourself again yeah. because if you, you kind of get so like... It's a very um, heady experience being on the computer. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it kind of, um, yeah, your whole brain does kind of change, I think. And having that reflection and I'm like, um, I'm still working on this. this is something I've been doing the last year or so, but in... Um, uh yeah planning my year around like action periods and like full-on break periods which yeah. are like a month long of just like um nice. uh and i try to infuse that as well into um because it is interesting in the herbal circle seeing how those kind of patterns come out naturally because of um a like i remember the like at the beginning like the first time of um yeah. running through like december january period um, there was kind of like a, um, mainly December, but this is the beginning of Jan January as well, like where, where everyone was on holidays yeah. and um, kind of resetting. And like the the energy in the group was different. Yeah. And like I said, I kind of react to that. And so I was um, like, we were talking about ways of, of taking that break and we were doing lots of visioning and just like nice. reflecting in that period. But it was interesting in that, um, that like there was this natural lull um, and then people were kind of trying to get back into it in January, but not quite there because of yeah. like this kind of, it's a bit hard to get started at the beginning of the year. And then, um, yeah, then the energy picks up again, uh, like at a certain point and people. Um, yeah, they more... start to get more charged as springs, as springs fire begins exactly. to come up through the soil. It's also seeping up through us too, you know? Yeah. And like, yeah, that, that's exactly how it is. And like, we are, we're part of it. I mean, we are part, we try to separate ourselves from nature, but we, we are part, we are part of part. nature yeah. and we need to kind of follow those rhythms as a part of our work as well, because it, it makes sense yeah. if we um, allow ourselves of that period of rest, Yeah, then we're going to work better yes. in the period of that of work. And like the, that's something that's so great about like actually having your own business is that you can yeah. do that like um the and this is the same as like um like this is what I love about the Ed entrepreneur conference is that it's mm -hmm. talked to so many people doing so many different things but like uh, the like farmers and people who are, yeah, grow plants and work with those live plants yeah naturally have that as part of right. their their flow yeah so the um people who like um the uh, the entrepreneur conferences heather olsen who like forages herbs. yeah and so she goes out and like picks herbs from the mountains and then goes to the market and sells them she also okay. has tinctures and um makes yeah. medicine as well but um the the like the seasonal period of that work like for farmers and foragers that's the same kind of thing it's just like in the summer it's just so busy there's like oh yeah yeah uh, like <laughs> it's really busy and it, yeah, and yeah. it's the same for product makers as well in terms yeah. of um, the markets. They, like, are very, a lot slower in winter. So, yeah. like, a lot of the Edward Circle members, for example, do a couple of markets in the winter, but not very many because of right. the people who come to the markets are not as many as well. And so the the value for their time of going to the market, setting everything up, is a lot less than going to the market in summertime. Right. And so there's that um, kind of, yeah, that balancing I mean, it's fun to go to the market once per month, but they wouldn't go every week in winter right. because of the the value isn't yeah. there for them. Yeah. But the, um, 
yeah, it's just that following those periods, I think like those more natural jobs like the, yeah, the grower and the forager of herbs, it's a lot easier to follow the, the systems. Yeah. And then if you have your business, like, like I, um, again, I follow that, like that's, um, I'm not a grower as such, but like the herbal classes, which I'm, uh, starting this year, it's more, um, that's definitely something that's going to happen more in spring, summer and autumn than in winter, which is that rest period for me right. at least. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. It's a 365, 24 seven endeavor. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do it every day, all day. If you're going to run a business, it, it's, I think that's the part that burns people out is they don't, you know, they think it's going to be this great thing and there's all this amazing stuff. And there's parts of that that are, but um, there are lots of parts of a business where, you know, it's not the part that you love to run, or love to do. I hate bookkeeping, can't stand it. Uh, so I found a way to have someone else do it for me. So if, if you can balance all of those things that you like and don't like, it can make your business a lot more fun to be. But when you have to do it all and, and there's just some things that, that we just don't like doing, it, it gets hard to get the motivation to do it. And uh, for me, I, 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 I can't shut off um, at all. I have no downtime in my yeah. business and what I do. Yeah, that's one of the things that Patrick and I have gone round and round on because I want him to shut down even just, you know, one day a week. You know? Someone <laughs> might call. A website might go down. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, and that's, I think that's one of the challenges of our culture is this demand that we're always on 24-7. I mean, the doors should never close, and it's not really healthy. Um, even it's, during... it's an interesting, yeah, that, that like that topic of being on like because yeah. there's like I have on periods where mm -hmm. like if I'm in the middle of the launch for the Herbal Entrepreneur Conference for example yeah no matter how organized I am yeah <laughs> it's gonna be a mess with support the week that we launch yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's, and like I'll be up in the middle of the night thinking oh I forgot to something yeah. right and, like I, <laughs> yeah. it, it happens but then we need to be able to have those those planned breaks in some way. Mm -hmm. And um, the I picked this up a lot from um, actually one of my um, freelance clients. So um, this was like I was basically the everything person for mm -hmm. another business before I was an herbalist. And this was like I was running the website and um, – I, I was doing all of the tech stuff um, behind the scenes for this business, and it was it was a stressful job yeah, when, it was, that's um, when it was going. It was um, uh, definitely very stressful, but it was um, uh, interesting. Like one of the goals that this um, person had was around um, being able to take herself as a business owner out of the business mm -hmm. for several weeks. Of, at a time and she was a core part of the business and it was interesting how to how to make that happen but yeah. if you have a team available to help you um and that it can be a small team like I was the only one <laughs> in this team <laughs> so that like you if you set up some kind of ways to make it happen it can um help and then you take turns taking time out yeah. for like a couple it's a bit more difficult because you would want to take time out together but <laughs> right. um <laughs> that's um but like yeah. it is possible to take time out, but you have to be very, very, very clear in how you plan that yeah. and um, how you communicate that to yeah. the people that you work with. I yeah. think. Yeah, it's a definite challenge. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Getting the team is the is the first part for me, I guess. Yep. Yep. So, That's your next step. Yeah. The team. I mean, it is. I mean, there's always the option of just putting up an email responder and saying like. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. out. <laughs> the, like, yeah. if you really need time, the like, uh, um, yeah. yeah, no. Well, <laughs> it depends on what you're. I'll be on my is. deathbed of my laptop yeah. trying to make sure a website's working. <laughs> yeah, well, like I, I can speak from experience with this. Yeah. In that, like, for my first baby, mm -hmm. I took my laptop to the. That's like this is terrible. I literally took my laptop there, but I like so I honestly thought I would be able to like get my laptop out and check my website just right. after giving birth, like which is just yeah. ridiculous. Like yeah. I was not able to yeah. do that. In the in the end, I actually didn't turn my laptop on for two weeks at all. Right. After oh, yeah. um, 
<laughs> like at, at all. But like, I it was just how unprepared I was yeah. <laughs> for motherhood. I was like, oh, I'll just take my laptop just in case. Oh, it but takes like, a lot of us by surprise. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah, that so was definitely an interesting experience. But like, I was just out for two weeks, no nothing. Yeah, and um, and then like, it's funny because you get to the end of it and you're like. I mean, things broke, but oh, yeah. it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Right. Like it was um, like there, there might have been problems or things like that. But in the end, I mean, if the website's not working, that's a big problem for the business. But right. eventually people are going to stop trying to click it and then they'll forget about it. And in two yeah. weeks when it's working again, they'll just come back and then it won't really matter. Yeah. Like it's, I mean, it does matter from a business perspective, but if you really need, like if there's an emergency, yeah, you kind of like you get do. through it. And that's that's for yeah. a sole business. Like I was on my own. I didn't have anyone on my team at that point. I just like yeah. thought I would be able to do it and was not able to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. but, like, <laughs> but like it wasn't the end of the world is the point. Like yeah. I um, was out for two weeks and then like, emailed everyone sorry I just had a baby but I'm back now and then right. that's kind of how it went but like it is that being able to um to realize that it's okay to separate yourself is um because I didn't think it was okay and then I just yeah circumstances yeah. led me in that direction and realized it wasn't that bad yeah yeah and I've, <laughs> I've known quite a few people where if they didn't eventually wake up to the fact that they needed the downtime they needed to build the team they needed to not be the only one who could do it mother nature found a way to ensure that they got that message and usually mm -hmm. that was an expensive and unpleasant experience <laughs> so yep. so trying mm -hmm. trying to find a way to incorporate that before mother nature steps in is probably wise um, but yeah. it is challenging i mean it really it really is challenging and the more that you more stress or the more pressure that you put on yourself, the more weight you have to carry, the harder it is to take the moment to set it down and think, you know, and be. But that's also essential to doing the business well and having the business eventually thrive on its own. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's, it's about like being aware, I think, as well of mm -hmm. um, kind of, yeah, yourself and your business as well. But like, um, continuously kind of checking in on how you're going and giving yourself that, um, that freedom <laughs> that yeah. if you need it to, um, to, you know, to take a warm bath, to like, just put your feet up and relax, to, to, to yes. take that time out, take the holiday that you need. It's, um, uh, or even just like a walk outside, yeah. like these things help that. And it's, um, important for and, ourselves. And I'm, I'm expecting that's one of the things that as part of the herbal circle, you guys encourage each other. <clears throat> excuse me that you encourage each other in that direction um definitely as you need it the, so. yeah like um there's always that kind of um yeah support throughout it but like specific times we have like um like we've done it a couple of times now like the self-care challenge and stuff like that which is just like things where you know we just one week I just like say all right <laughs> let's all focus on first like because this is like more like if I've seen in like I call the herbal discussions that we do each month the tea yeah. room so that's where we come on like a, a video chat and we all just chat about what's going on and that's where I get that vibe from of what's nice. going on and so for example in that like um that when everyone's busy, they're feeling or run to the good ground yeah. in the action phase. Usually, yeah. is when I would bring up the the self care challenge yeah. or something similar, and that's where, like, at the beginning of the challenge, we'll just say three things that we're going to do this week that, or whatever the time period is. I'm just making it up here, but right. <laughs> the like um, that we're going to do that is for ourselves, not for yeah. a like. Not business, for the business, not for, not the family, for money. For yeah. yeah, like just to, <laughs> just for fun. And then like it's nice because then um, we like share photos of ourselves doing those things or just comments or whatever people want. But it's like beautiful to see um, nice. other people doing that. And it um, makes and it easier. Also, yeah. And yeah, seeing other people doing that makes you think, oh, it's okay to actually yeah. do that. Like it gives yourself permission yeah. to spend that time to um, – for yourself and then that um again then you come back stronger and more able to really push forward in those times that you need to so it's like just a really important phase of it that is that is so how do folks who uh want to get involved with the herbal circle how do they get a hold of you how do they find you 
Um, yeah, so if you go to herbalentrepreneur.com, you will be able to find, um, there will be links there somewhere on the page. That's just on the homepage. If you go to Herbal Entrepreneur slash Herbal Circle, okay. uh, then you'll be able to, um, yeah, like join up there. Basically, it's a monthly membership um, community okay. and um, it's flexible. So you can join for as long or as little as you like. And um, yeah, but most people, yeah, stay on for longer because it is a very supportive community and we really do help yeah. each other to um to yeah I guess just grow our herbal businesses but it's like a beautiful community because we become friends over time and um there's that those connections are built which is nice so that um it's like that that's like where my heart is as part of the whole herbal entrepreneur community is these um the people in that community because if they're the they're the ones who are there every month in and out and like I actually yeah. talk to them in the video chats and and I know what's going on in their businesses like that. Nice. Um, yeah. They're like friends. <laughs> nice. the, um, either, and so that's, um, yeah, that's how you can get into it. It's in my website and it's also on yeah, Facebook and Instagram, Herbal Entrepreneur. You can find me there too. Okay. And we will make sure we have links in the show notes. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. It was a, um, really lovely to be here. All right. As and always, as always, put an herb on, on it. it. The statements made about herbs and products on this podcast have not been evaluated by the United States Food and Drug Administration, FDA, and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. All information provided on this podcast or any affiliated websites is for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for advice from your physician or other healthcare professional. You should not use the information on this podcast and its affiliated websites for a diagnosis or treatment of any health problem. Always consult with a healthcare professional before starting any new vitamins, supplements, diet, or exercise program before taking any medication, or if you have or suspect you might have a health problem. Any testimonials, questions, or case studies are based on individual results and do not constitute a guarantee that you will achieve the same results.